Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I hope you're well and I hope you're ready for this new topic. We're going to look at why do chemical reactions happen? What is it that makes a reaction happen or not happen? And in the process, we're going to introduce the concept of entropy. So it's the first in a series where we're going to look at why chemical reactions happen or don't happen. And in this episode, we're going to introduce the concept of entropy. We're going to start by talking about endothermic and exothermic reactions and why some endothermic reactions happen. We're then going to talk about what entropy is and a little bit about how we can use it. So firstly, you've probably noticed that most chemical reactions that occur are exothermic. They give out heat. When you carry out a reaction in the lab at college, you'll often notice that the test tube or the beaker is getting warm, even though no energy is being applied externally. And that is coming from the reaction itself. But some reactions are endothermic and they still go ahead. So although up to now we've often heard this general explanation that reactions can occur if overall they give out energy, there are clearly some that don't fit that pattern. And we're going to talk about why. What is it that makes reactions possible or not possible? And in chemistry, we use the terms spontaneous or feasible to say that a reaction is possible in the conditions that we're considering. If a reaction is possible, it's feasible, it's spontaneous under those conditions. And to understand that, we have to think about the nature of the reactants that we're dealing with, the solids, the liquids, the gases, and how ordered their structure is, how ordered their molecules or atoms are arranged and bonded. And that concept is known as entropy. So substances in solid form have low entropy because their structure is very highly structured, the randomness is low. Liquids have less structure, their atoms or molecules are able to pass each other. So the entropy of liquids is higher than that of solids. And of course, in gases, the atoms or the molecules are much further apart from each other. The amount of structure in the bonding between the molecules is very low indeed. The randomness, if you will, is very high. and Therefore, the entropy of gases is considerably higher than that of liquids or solids. We could actually quantify the entropy for substances at a particular temperature and pressure conditions. Therefore, we're able to work out the entropy change during a reaction by knowing the entropy that existed at the beginning of the reaction and the entropy that exists at the end of the reaction. So we can quantify, calculate the overall entropy change of a reaction. Let's mention the units of entropy because they're not that straightforward. They're joules per Kelvin per mole. And entropy is given the symbol S. It's a capital S. So during a reaction, we might calculate the entropy change and we would call that delta S. So that is the change between the entropy of all the moles of reactant and all the moles of product in the balanced equation. Reactions where the products have a a lower level of order or a higher entropy, higher randomness than the reactants will result in a positive delta S, a positive change in entropy. The entropy will increase in that system. And it's a really important value for us to calculate. It's going to play part of us understanding whether or not a reaction is feasible, spontaneous, possible under the conditions that we're doing a reaction. And we'll talk more about something called Gibbs free energy and the calculation involved with that in the next episode. And delta S, the change in entropy, is a part of that. It's going to be a part of that calculation, which will help us to understand, is a reaction feasible or not feasible? So please listen into the next episode. We're going to be talking about that and then we'll have the answer to that. If you have any questions on on what we've talked about today, then please do contact me. The the best place is on Instagram at chemistrymadesimple. You can DM me there if you want, 
Also, if you want to come into the Patreon community and support the show and ask questions there, you would be very welcome. That's patreon.com slash chemistry made simple. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, do look after yourself and goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. And until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.